Now, we get so many people yeah. hitting you up on Twitter and uh, Instagram. What's your Instagram, Frankie? Uh, Frank Ferragini. Frank Ferragini. And, uh, Frank Ferragini on Twitter as well. Okay, same with me. I'm at, no, I'm not Tracy Moore. I'm Tracy City Line. There but you, you can find me on both. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Madalena has a question about her zucchini. Okay, so yeah. we thought we would give this to you right now. She says it's been several years now, and she's got these sticky bugs eating her zucchini and her cucumbers. They start with the leaves, and they eventually kill the vegetables. They look like ladybugs, but they're yellow and black. So she yes. wants to know... What does she do to get them to stop? So it's called the cucumber beetle. It's a cucumber beetle. Uh, cucumber beetle is quite common when you have any uh, sort of plant that's from the squash family. Okay. Of course, zucchini and cucumbers are all from the same family. Yep. Uh, first thing that you can do is you can pick them and you can squish them. You see them, you oh, start really? picking. Yeah, great job to give for your kids. Second thing that you can do <laughs> is They'll next year, it. yeah, next year companion plant. What I want you to do is at the end of the garden, take some nasturtiums, plant those at the end of the garden. It's a host plant. So what'll happen is the cucumber beetle will fly over, eat the nasturtiums, and keep the cucumbers away. Oh. Uh, a repellent plant as well is if you put a row of radishes close to your cucumbers, great. And even right now, what you can do is take the tops of radishes, put those beside the cucumbers and zucchinis. Yeah. That will help to repel. Uh, if you are in a province where you're still allowed to have insecticides, you use an insecticide on them as well. So that's smart. You just use little decoys. You got lure it. Lure them somewhere else. Yeah, there are traps available yes. as well. But uh, the best thing to do is to try to lure them to a host plant. And nasturtiums right. is that one plant that should be in the vegetable garden. And the purpose, you can eat the blooms, but more so the foliage will always be eaten by bugs. You go over there, you can hear it hum. Right. There's so many bugs in there, keeping everything else alone. So if we never want Randy and Jason to come here, we should line up green peppers, like right here. <laughs> And then, and then, come. and then for Massimo, we'll put hot peppers over here. And then here. put hot peppers over there. And nobody comes with around. With mortadella. It. Yeah, with mortadella yeah. and the hot peppers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Okay, well, <laughs> he's still mad. Let's squeeze <laughs> more. Party. My rose plants. This is from Nathan. My yeah. rose plants uh, leaves are being eaten away by insects. Please help me out with a solution for this problem. Tried soapy water, didn't help. Yeah, so an insecticide of soap, which is dish soap and water. Mm -hmm. uh, another beetle, this here would be a Japanese beetle. And Japanese beetle quite found on roses. It's a hard shell, so the soapy water is not going to work. Good for prevention to always continue to start every 10 days after a rose goes into bloom to spray the foliage with insecticidal soap. That'll help out. There are pheromone traps available for Japanese beetles. Mm. So the pheromone trap is just like a, it's almost like wearing cologne to attract the beetles into the area. I'm over and here. you trap them in. The problem is, is when you trap them in, you trap a lot of beetles in. Oh. So with pheromone traps, put them away from your rows, put them on your neighbor's property, really good idea. <laughs> um, but as well, there are some d disease and insect resistant rose varieties, so maybe get rid of this one and put in a knockout rose that'll have a greater resistance to the problem with the Japanese beetles. Nice stuff, Frankie, yeah. thank you. Break time, we're coming up, so let's <laughs>